not to. So some people that um, are, are might be looking at this blog may be uh, psychology students or people in graduate programs that are thinking about um, a career in, in military psychology. Maybe you could tell me some of the characteristics that you found throughout these 27 years that contribute to the success. Well, actually, I could probably go farther. Uh, 17 plus 27, I don't know, too much math. But <laughs> what are some of the, the, the characteristics you find for the success of a psychology intern, uh, spe especially in the military? Yeah, I, I think, firstly, in terms of the, the characteristics of the person, they have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. The flexibility, I think, is, uh, is the key. Semper Gumby, as, as mm -hmm. we say. Semper Gumby, yes. <laughs> You, you have to be able to, uh, to go with the flow and know and, and you can expect that things are not always going to go smoothly, that things are going to change from one minute to the next, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to make those modifications. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that, uh, that we tried to do uh, in, uh, in the internship is one way to try to help people with that is to have them do lots of very different things within a given day. Mm -hmm. So it would not be uncommon for somebody to uh, come in in the morning for to see a long-term psychotherapy patient in uh, long-term psychodynamic treatment, uh, after which they would move into seeing a, a, a short-term CBT patient, uh, and then do uh, PTSD treatment, and then do some, uh, some testing, and then get into su supervision of the dynamic case, and then testing case, and then the CBT case, going back and forth, uh, just doing lots of different things that require very different kinds of approaches so that one gets gets used to really being able to very flexibly and quickly change from one thing to the other, change your mindset in terms of what your goals are and what you're trying to accomplish with any given person. Right, and maybe even running a group in the afternoon. Absolutely. So it's uh, this, you're kind of bombarded with a lot of different experiences to kind of make you a more well-rounded psychologist and give you the ability to move in different areas depending on what the command needs when you arrive to your next command. Right. As we say in neuropsychology, you have to have good set shifting skills. <laughs> good set shifting <laughs> skills, yes. Um, and then I guess kind of the, the flip side of that is what would be some of the unexpected challenges that you found some of our interns might face when they come to this internship program? Because we try to prepare them for success, but sometimes it seems maybe we don't uh, emphasize some of the difficulties that come with uh, being a military psychologist. Well, I think there, there are some issues around being a military psychologist and some issues around our internship program. Mm -hmm. Let me start with the internship program issues first. Uh, we have very strong emphasis in terms of uh, testing, uh, intakes, and specialty evaluations that are military specific. Mm -hmm. uh, health psychology, and neuropsychology. Uh, virtually nobody comes in with a strong background in all of those areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going to be expected that virtually everybody's going to come in with at least one of those areas that we emphasize as being something they've had little to no experience with whatsoever. So they're starting from the ground up having to do that. And they all emphasize some very different kinds of skills. Mm -hmm. uh, neuropsychology, for example, uh, there's the focus on neuroscience, mm -hmm. knowing about neuroscience, neurophysiology, neurochemistry, uh, neuroanatomy. Uh, and for some people that may be uh, something very, very new that's very difficult to learn how to do in a short period of time. Uh, for health psychology, we uh, use the, uh, the model. Uh, it's the, the BHOP, I think. They call it BHOP now. It's a Strassen model mm -hmm. uh, that, was, that was developed. And basically you have to memorize a script and, and you go in and it's very short term, very focused about what you're there to do. In terms of any follow-up, there may be one, possibly two, no more than two follow-ups with a person to just try to get them on the right track, to learn how to do some brief interventions on their own, and to have to refer them on if, that, if that's not sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, Many of our interns have a great deal of difficulty saying, I see what this person needs and I'm used to being able to provide that and this model doesn't allow me to do that. Right. It says that if I can't do what the model asks me to do, I have to send them out to somebody else to do the things that I'm used to doing and that I want to do, mm -hmm. but I'm not allowed to do within this model, within this rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can learn some of those uh, sorts of things. Uh, they do get the, the opportunities with uh, sleep psychology 
to work with uh, residents uh, and staff in sleep medicine mm -hmm. and learn about those kinds of evaluations and interventions mm -hmm. and participate in those interventions also. And that's something that very few people come in prepared to do or with much of a background. Right. Assessment uh, has been played down increasingly in graduate schools, especially uh, assessments around doing TAT and Rorschach and some of the, uh, the projective or performance kinds of tests. Uh, so a lot of people, usually at least half of the people who come in, have little to no background, at least with those tests, mm -hmm. uh, and have to start from, from the ground up learning them. And they're not uh, so easy, especially uh, Rorschach. Uh, that's very labor intensive uh, and not an easy thing to learn. And in this program, we, we kind of emphasize that to make sure that they learn and can do that competently. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have people who really have to uh, run pretty quickly to try to catch up with regard to that. So that becomes uh, a challenge. Uh, and we have an outpatient, uh, in addition to uh, being able to do an intake, and most people come in having good experience doing intake and uh, diagnosis. Uh, but uh, we have specialty evaluations that are military specific. Uh, is somebody uh, able to, uh, to stay in the military? You know, fitness for duty evaluation. Did they have to be administratively or medically boarded? Mm -hmm. uh, that's not so easy for uh, people coming in from the, the civilian sector in psychology training to say, I'm supposed to decide whether somebody should be kicked out of the military or not? Right. It's a dual uh, role. It, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a dual role, number one. Mm -hmm. And it also is a tremendous amount. Uh, somebody's life is really right. dependent upon your decision. Right. And people are understandably, uh, initially, quite anxious about, you know, why should their lives be in my hands and what I decide based on my, sometimes, interview. Right. Uh, so uh, we have to help them to, to get used to that. 